But I want to let you know that, so today we're going to start looking at electron orbitals and finding where electrons lie in the atom. Okay, so up here is a picture of the modern atom. Okay, and we have all these three-dimensional shapes in there. It looks a lot different than our normal Bohr atom with just the orbitals and the electrons going in circles around. Okay, there are different uh, places where the electrons lie and these are called orbitals. So here is uh, one orbital, this is a sphere looking orbital, here's another orbital inside that, that's another sphere. And then you have these little bulbs here that uh, some science books call them dumbbell looking things. But uh, I'm not sure I agree with that they look like dumbbells, but um, really. But, um, we're looking at these because we're looking at electrons in those clouds because we really don't know where electrons lie. There's this guy named Heisenberg, and if you uh, watch, watch Breaking Bad, right? Walt White is Heisenberg, and that's his character name. He named himself after this guy. He who said this is impossible to simultaneously know both the exact position and energy of an electron. So. It's, this is his uncertainty principle. He's just saying it's uncertain where electrons lie. So we don't really know where these electrons are in, in the atom. Okay? It is impossible to know. Okay? It's impossible to know. And you can't know the exact position and energy of the electron at the same time. Do we need to write that? Yeah, write down Heisenberg because I want you to uh, remember him. Yeah, and just know that this is called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. So physicists and quantum mechanic people who study these things make a joke. And this is their joke. They say, hey, Heisenberg was driving down the highway, then he gets pulled over by a cop. And the cop tells him, hey, do you know how fast you were going? And Heisenberg says, no, but I can tell you my exact position but I can't tell you at the same time. Oh, you get it. So Heisenberg is uncertain. He made the uncertainty principle, so you can't determine his speed and his position at the same time. Okay? All right, so here is... Um, what people have said about an electron. Instead of, um, instead of plotting where the electron is, what they did is just sat there um, looking at the atom. Well, you can't, couldn't really look at it. They had to try to find where they are using instruments. And what they did is drew a probability cloud. So here is a probability cloud. You can see that it's darker in the center. So for each time um, they observe the electron, they put a dot there and said, okay, that's where the electron is. And then um, sometimes, so you could imagine there's a lot of dots here because it's darker and fewer dots on the outside. So here is the probability curve where the electron sometimes lies. If it's in the center, it lies there more. And on the outside, it's there less. Okay? So... We don't know where the electron is and where it's going and, and where it's moving. Uh, we just know that we could see the electron at a certain time, and whenever they see it, they drew a dot. So we can say that 99% of the time, the electron lies within this electron cloud. And it's just a probability cloud. We can probably see where the electron is. I'll show you more probability clouds. And these clouds are are in the shape of an S orbital. They, that's what they call it, the S orbital. So here is one cloud. It's spherical. That's why I have the X, Y, and Z axis there because it's in three dimensions and you need a Z axis for three dimensions. So here is the probability cloud of an S orbital. So the electron will 99% of the time be in that sphere. For uh, another S, uh, the second S orbital, it would be this blue cloud, which is 
bigger than the red cloud. See how the red cloud's in there? The blue cloud gets even larger, and then this dull orange cloud gets even larger. Okay, so it's just the probability of finding that electron there. <coughs> here are some more clouds, and and um, so here is um, three different p orbitals. They look the same shape, but they're just turned in different ways in three dimensions. So one's on the x-axis, one's on the y-axis, and one's on the z-axis. Okay. Here is here is a plot of another orbital. It's called the 2p orbital. Notice that there's a lot of dots here and a lot of dots here and no dots in the center but it gets thinner throughout the outside. This is the dumbbell shape that I'm talking about and the, we call this the p. Makes it even more complicated. This is d orbitals and I cannot make sense of how they got these shapes but they look like double dumbbells I guess just turned on differently but what the heck is that one? I don't even know how they got there. But we don't really need to get into that in this class. Oh. We just need to know that that we just need to accept the fact that we don't know where the electron is all the time. All we can do is draw a probability cloud and that's 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 as much as that's that's as much as uh sci scientists know at this point as well. Okay, so for filling these orbitals, uh, it's, <coughs> it's difficult to draw all these electrons on a three-dimensional, uh, this three-dimensional thing on a two-dimensional piece of paper. So there's this brilliant guy, he came up with a diagram for us to draw where these electrons lie. This guy, his name is Aufbau, and this is the Aufbau diagram here, okay? He made a principle, he said, electrons occupy the lowest energy orbitals first. And this is consistent with Bohr's model of the atom because the electrons that were in the closer orbital um, that's closer to the nucleus were the ones that uh, fell first, or they, we call them their ground state ones, okay, before the other electrons fill up after them. And this is his diagram. Okay? He drew um, energy on a axis here saying that energy increases as we go up on this paper as we fill, it, fill these orbitals in. And he said that S or S um, orbitals have one orbital. Okay, Here this is a P. P has three orbitals to fill with the electrons. Okay? These um, um, blue squares are called the orbitals. The S's have ones and the P's have three S's have ones and the D has five orbitals to fill in. Each orbital can contain two electrons. Okay, so these arrows are an electron. Okay, arrow up means it's spinning. Did you know electrons spin? Okay, so electrons spin. Uh, so if it goes up, it's spinning one direction. If the arrow is pointing down, it's spinning a different direction. Okay, so this is how he drew how to fill in electrons into orbitals of atoms. Okay? So he started with the lowest energy level. And this numbers, these numbers here correspond to energy levels. Okay? So we start off with the lower energy level that's at the lower energy. One, two, and then three, and then four. Okay? These are the energy levels. This is this um, these letters here, like S, P, and D. We're gonna learn later that there's also F. Okay, but these are called the sublevels. Yeah, yeah. So the S sublevel is spherical. We know that now, right? They they look like spherical. The P's look like dumbbells. Okay. Now, these orbitals are kind of like rooms, like if I were the resident director and I own this building, well, maybe not the resident, okay, if I was the owner of a building and I could fill it with people, okay, <clears throat> these orbitals would kind of be like the rooms, okay, I could fill people in rooms and these electrons would be 
like people. And if I if I were a one S, if I was on the first floor, hey, okay, first floor has only one room, so I can only fill two people per room. Okay, the the second floor has uh one sub level with one room, and has another sub level with three rooms. So I can fill two people in each room. I could fill uh, two, four, six, eight people in that floor. Okay, so these electrons are filling these orbitals just like people fill a room. So it can't okay? be like, it can't be like two S. No, I have to fill in the first floor first. One, because it's the lowest energy level. And because if I'm the resident owner, people want to be on the first floor first, so they're closest to the exit. No. Okay. So they can go and come as they please. So yes, you got to fill in the lowest level first. Oh my God. You got to fill in the lower energy level so first. So you fill up the thing because it's all the S's. Yeah. No, no, I fill down the, the, the thing that's closest to the oh. bottom here. I'm going to fill the 1S first and then the 2S and then the 2P and then the 3S and then 3P and the 4S and then the 3D. That's the order because that's the order of it increasing in height. Correcto, yo. So it always has to be like that? Every yes. time? Yes. Every off-ball diagram looks the same way. Exactly the same. Yes. That is the only off-ball, off-ball <laughs> diagram. Off-ball. That's <laughs> That's Every so off ball diagram looks the same. We're just going to fill it in with different amounts of oh, electrons. Time. Yes. Yeah. Every off ball diagram looks the same. We're just going to so fill it up it with different electrons. They have to have at least two, right? So how does it look? We're, let's do an example of how, to, how it looks if we have a different number of electrons. Okay? So that's what, that was the question, right? I'm going to answer your question. Are you going to have to read this on the test? All right. So... Let's draw a blank off-ball diagram, okay? It always starts off the same way, okay? 1S is first, and we'll draw a, a blank. That line represents an orbital that can be filled, okay? The next level up is 2S with only one orbital. The next level up is 2P. 2P has three orbitals, okay? 3S is the high, next highest energy with the one orbital, 3p is the next highest energy with three orbitals. 4s is the next highest energy with only one orbital. And 3d is the next highest energy. d orbitals have five. Uh, d sublevels have five orbitals. Yeah, how do you know how many sublevels you have? Um, s always has one or orbital. Uh, p's always have three orbitals and these always have five orbitals okay so should I write that down for you S has three sorry I yeah you got it S S always has one orbital P always has boop, 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 three orbitals and D always has Five orbitals. So, how many electrons can fit in the S sublevel? Well, two, okay, because two for every orbital. How about how many electrons can fit in the P sublevel? Six. Six. How many electrons can fit in the D sublevel? Ten. You guys are brilliant. You know what's going on. Okay, so uh, here's the number of electrons. This is the orbitals. And this is the sublevel. Look at this chart we just created. I like it. Wait, okay. So 4S has one orbital. Yes. If there's four S's, wouldn't it fit? Four no, no. This four is doesn't mean there's four S's. This four means this is the fourth level. Oh. Hit the elevator button on the fourth level and you go to the fourth level. So wait, why, why do you have levels in your building that are like next to each other? So what I drew in black is all you need to draw for off ball diagrams, okay? Now, give me a um give me any atom on the periodic table, uh no higher than uh 10, please. Hi- hydrogen. You could do hydrogen. Um let's do Well, hydrogen is easy. Okay, fine. Let's do hydrogen. Okay? How many electrons does hydrogen have? 
Huh? One electron. All right. So what does the Aufbau diagram look like for hydrogen? One arrow. One. Boom! I'm done. I did the Aufbau diagram for hydrogen. Woo! Easy. Give me another one. Let's start from the beginning again. Okay. Let's do carbon. Okay, how many electrons does carbon have? All right, so when we... Okay, so there's six electrons for carbon, okay? When we fill in this Aufbau diagram, there's several rules. The first rule is that I have to fill in the bottom row first, or the lowest energy level first, okay? Fill in the lowest energy level first. The next rule is that when you fill in these rooms, these people like to spread out. They don't want to have a roommate, because then, oh, you got to share all your stuff with the roommate. So if you're going to have... If you're gonna have um, people in a room, you're going to put them by themselves before you give them a roommate, okay? So those are two rules. So let's fill in, um, let's do the Aufbau diagram for carbon, keeping in mind these two rules. Carbon has how many electrons? Six. Good. So let's fill in the bottom row first. Six. So here's the one electron there. And there's no other rooms So on the first level. So we have to give um, this guy a roommate. So we do two electrons now. Okay. Okay. So there's two. We gotta draw how many more electrons now? Four. Four more. Okay. So let's do four more. Here's another one. Okay. And there's nothing else in this level, so we have to give him a roommate. Okay. So there's four now. We need two more electrons, right, to make six. So here is one, and he doesn't want to roommate, so two. Boom. That is the Aufbau diagram for carbon. They always don't want to roommate. Okay. The S's have roommate because that's, cause they're, that's the only orbital in their floor. You got to fill the lowest floor first, okay? Or the or lowest energy, the electrons want to be at the lowest energy before they, because it takes more energy. You don't want more energy. It's not energy efficient. This why, is. Why does 2p have two arrows going up? What one let's do. Um, let's do phosphorus. All right, phosphorus has how many electrons? Huh? How many electrons does phosphorus have? Fifteen. All right, so let's do 15 now. Uh, let's do phosphorus. I got to start again from the beginning. Okay, so let's do um, phosphorus, right? So phosphorus already has these two, these two, this one, this one. So let's continue. And uh, I already drew six electrons. I need to draw how many more electrons to make phosphorus electron diagram? Nine, nine more. So, so let's draw nine more. Okay, so the next one, would, the next electron would be here. Okay, because you want to fill up that level before you give them roommates. Okay, so there, that's that's a two, four, six, two, four, five, six, seven electrons. Here's eight. There's a ninth. There's a tenth. These arrows are going the opposite way because if electrons uh, are in the same orbital, they need to have opposite spin. Okay, one needs to spin up, one needs to spin down. How many more electrons do I need now? Five. How many more electrons? Five. So here's one. Okay. Where would I put the next one? Down, Down spin on 3s. Good. So I have... Uh, so how many more electrons do I need now? Three. Three more. So arrow up, arrow up, and arrow up. I just did the off-ball diagram for phosphorus. Congratulations. But the levels keep going up and up. Phosphorus is 15. That's what it is. Phosphorus has 15 electrons, so we filled up 15 spaces on our off-ball diagram. Okay. All right, now... Now, there's an even shorter way of doing this. And off-ball diagrams, you can imagine if you have to draw several of them, they would take up a lot of room on your paper. 
So scientists have come up with a way to just write it um, and take up less space. So this is what it would look like. This is called the uh, this is the shorthand electron configuration. Okay, what you would do is let's write this for phosphorus. Okay, you would write the uh, level which is 1 and fill up the lower level first so and then the sub level which is s and then I would make a, su a superscript to show how many electrons are in that orbital how many electrons right now are in the 1s orbital 2 so I make a superscript 2 1s2 okay the next level is the 2s the next level is 2 and the next sub level is s and so how many electrons are in the 2s orbital? 2, good. Uh, the next level is 2 and sublevel P. How many electrons are in that? 6, good. And then 3s, you can see where I'm going with this. 3s2 and then 3p what? 3p3. And boom, what I just wrote in blue is the shorthand for writing the electron configuration. Wow. Mind blown? Makes it easy. You okay, if you need to draw the off ball diagram before you can get to the shorthand method, then go ahead and draw the off ball diagram. Okay? So is it always in this order? Kayla asked, are the electron are the levels and sublevels always in this order? Yes, they're always in this order. Okay, so um, no matter what, how many electrons there are, they're always going to fill the 1s first, and then the 2s, and then the 2p, and then the 3s, and then the 3p, and then the 4s, and then the 3d, so on and so forth. But guys, there's good news. There's an easy way of memorizing this order. There's an easy way. order. Okay, here is what you can do. Is there a song? Here is a chart. This is how you can memorize the order. Okay? So, <clears throat> when you draw the chart, you're just gonna, <clears throat> you are just going to write the uh, levels in columns. So here's here's the levels. One, level two, level three, level four, level five, level six, level seven. Okay, easy. So um, here's level one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, and then in the columns you write the sub levels. So S, okay, uh, number two has uh, S, sorry, and P. Okay, three is uh, S, P, D. Notice how each column has, um, each of the columns have the same sublevel. So all throughout this column, we're going to have the same S sublevel. All through this column, we're going to have the same P sublevel. Sorry. This should be uh, for D, for F, uh, 5S, 5P. 5D and 5F, okay? So, you can see 6S, 6P, 6D, 6F, and 7S, 7P, 7D, and 7F, okay? So, I just, so in order to memorize this easy, th this has no, uh, this has no, no really application other than to memorize the order easily, okay? So, just go ahead and all of the all of the columns will have the same level all of the sorry all of the rows will have the same level all of the columns will have the same sub level well i drew them all in here so, because we're going to find out why they don't um, we're going to find out that these really don't matter that i wrote those okay all right so um, now we just draw diagonal lines, okay, to find the order that these orbitals fall in our off-ball diagram. The lowest energy level is 1s, so here's a line going to 1s. I come back up, okay, 
and I draw an arrow 2s and I just draw diagonal arrows. The next level would be 2p and then 3s. Okay. Next level would be 3p and then 4s. And then 3d, 4p, 5s. And then 4d, 5p, 6s. And then 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s. And then that's it. Okay? So, yeah, you can see that it didn't matter that I drew these here, but I wanted to draw them to uh, show you that um, the uh, column, what, what contains in the columns and the rows. So, this is an easy way to memorize what order these uh, levels and sublevels fall in our off bow diagram. Okay? What do the arrows do? What do the arrows do? They, the, these, these arrows I drew to tell you what order they go in, in the off-bow diagram. So if I were to draw an off-bow diagram, right, my S level would come first. My 1S would be first. Okay, so let's draw an off-bow diagram now. 1S would be first. Okay, next is what? Look at the red arrow. Okay, 2S. Okay, and, each, and then what's next? 2P. Okay, and that has three orbitals, and what's next? 3s. Boom, see? By looking at this here, I could easily determine the off-bow diagram. 